When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear them, each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pamphrygia and Phrygia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Christians and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, he said, Let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they will prophesy. And I will show things in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of God's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We've been wearing masks for months now. It seems like ages and ages. Whenever we go shopping, whenever we come to church, and many other places as well. I'd have thought I've got used to it by now, but I haven't. I still love that feeling of ripping the mask off and taking a deep breath of air. It's a fabulous feeling, feeling that fresh air coming into your lungs, not through the fabric of the mask. Today, this Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came to Jesus' followers in Jerusalem. The Gospel writer Luke describes it in Acts chapter 2, with the Spirit coming as a rushing wind, as tongues of fire, at giving the disciples and Jesus' followers to speak in different languages. It all sounds pretty spectacular stuff. The Greek word for spirit is pneuma, which also means wind or breath. Breathing is a sign of life, so receiving God's Holy Spirit makes us alive. It fills us as we breathe God's Spirit in. And the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel talked about this too, when he writes about a collection of dry bones being filled with God's breath, coming alive. The breath of God is at the heart of us. It's at the centre of all creation. It's about new life, eternal life. God's breath, God's spirit animates. It's a spirit, an ongoing spirit of renewal. And when the crowds hear the disciples speaking in their own languages because of the Holy Spirit, it's a reminder that God's Spirit is for all. God's Spirit includes all and does so in a way that is relevant to all. And I think that's really important. I don't know about you, but some Christians can be very wary of the Spirit. They can hear of miraculous and amazing things that the Spirit can do in people's lives. 
but that makes them feel scared. What's going to happen? What is God's spirit going to do for us or with us? But remember, God made each one of us and each one of us is made in the spirit of God. So God's spirit in us is already adding to what is there. Just as a reader breathes life into a piece of writing, just as an actor breathes life into a role, so the Holy Spirit breathes life into us. God's Spirit gives us what we need when we need it. And that is where it's hard to pin the Spirit down and to describe what the Spirit is. For some, the Spirit supports and guides. For others, it strengthens and gives peace. For others, it acts as a prompt, someone who challenges. And for others, it empowers and energises. I guess many of us can describe different points in our lives when the Spirit has engaged with us and filled us in those sorts of ways and probably other ways too. The Spirit can be and is different things for different people at different times. But whenever, wherever and however the Spirit comes, God's Holy Spirit is from God. And God always works for good. And God is there for us, just like the air that we breathe. This coming Tuesday marks a year since the death of George Floyd, when he was killed by a policeman kneeling on his neck, stopping him from breathing. We remember with sadness his needless death, and we vow that his death shall not be in vain, as we commit ourselves again to justice, and especially to racial justice. We need to be open to the life-affirming, to the life-giving Spirit, and not suffocate and quench the Spirit's breath, either in ourselves or in others. The response to the day of Pentecost was mixed. Some who heard the Spirit speaking in their own languages accepted it and rejoiced in it, Others mocked it, saying that it sounded like the words of a drunkard. But the words of Peter in his sermon on Pentecost ended when he said, Everyone and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Spirit is there for all and for us. It was there for Jesus' followers in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, and it's here for us today. So, take a breath in, open your lungs to God's breath, open our hearts to God's love, open our lives to God's power. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill us. Gentle Spirit, calm our fears. Spirit of truth, lead us to a broader vision of your work. Spirit of strength, in our weakness, make us strong. Spirit of power, show us when and how to act for you. Holy Spirit, send us forward, for we go with you, and you go with us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen.